everyone, uh, so my name is Kristen, I'm a member of the Peterson Lab, and in this video, myself and another member of the lab, Quangine, are going to walk you through how we do solid phase peptide synthesis, or SPPS, in the Peterson Lab. Okay, so as the name implies, SPPS is done off of a solid support, and so this is represented here, where it's essentially a bead, which is just polystyrene or plastic, uh, with a chemical linker on it. And so we refer to this entity as the resin. So the, in the video on the left here, uh, this is our reaction setup that we do the, the solid phase peptides and this is in. It's a fritted syringe with a stir bar in it. And in solution there, stirring is the solid support or the resin. And so once we usually have this set up, we're ready to go with this uh, with the rest of our synthesis. And so this is going to be done uh, virtually by Kuang Ai. And the, her hands are going to be doing all the work in these videos. Um, and so the first thing that we're ready to do is perform our first coupling reaction. And so what this does is it adds on our first amino acid. Um, and so our amino acid in this case is valine. And so first what Huang Ai is going to do is she's going to weigh it out. Alrighty, so now what Huang An would do is she would dissolve up our first amino acid in some solvent and then add it to our solid support to react and to perform the coupling. So the next step is referred to as a deprotection. And so this blue circle here off of our first amino acid um, is a protectant group. It's an f mock group. And so in order to continue on with the synthesis, we have to remove this group first, hence the deprotection name. And so in the video, so this is where the hood in which we do manual peptide synthesis. And so this is just after the coupling step. So the first thing that Kuang is going to do is she's going to open up our reaction vessel, and then she's going to drain the solution from it. So that manifold there that she just uh, added the syringe to, it has a vacuum under the hood. So it's draining our vessel. And so in these steps, uh, to make sure that there's nothing on the solid support, to make sure that our growing peptide is clean, uh, she performs a series of washes. So the first solvent that she used was DMF. Uh, this one is DCM. And you can see her putting it on the stir plate there to make sure that it's stirring and mixing. And then she drains and is ready for the next wash, which is DMF. Okay. And so now in the reaction vessel is just the solid support and we are ready to begin, begin our deprotection. And so this reaction is prompted by a base. Our base is piperidine. And so what she's adding right now is actually a solution of piperidine in DMF. And she is going to be adding that to our reaction vessel, to the growing peptide chain. And then she's going to leave it on the stir plate to stir. And so in this reaction, our base, the piperidine, abstracts a proton. And then there's this cascade that eventually results in the removal of the FMOC group um, to release our free amine. Okay. So after the deprotection is formed, our next reaction is a coupling again. Um, but this one's a little different because our next amino acid is not a reactive enough to just couple on here. So what you have to do is you have to activate it first. 
So in this bio here, huangine has our amino acid, our next amino acid, um, weighed out in a vial with the activator. And so here she's adding DMF and she's going to dissolve the two. So you'll see here, so the solution is clear, uh, which is because the two have not reacted yet. So in order to promote this reaction, we have to add a base. This base is dip. And then she will mix the two to react. And now you can see it has this faint yellow color, which corresponds to the activated amino acid. And so now uh, she is ready to add the activated yellow amino acid to our reaction vessel, which has the growing peptide chain with the free amine of our orange amino acid. And then she will leave the two of those to stir and react to end up with this product here. Okay, so again, you'll see that we have our blue protecting group that's here. So to continue on with the reaction, we have to remove it and we do this with the deprotection step. And then our free amine is ready to go so we can couple on our next amino acid, our green one. And hopefully at this point you're starting to see the trend that SPPS is just a series of coupling, deprotection, coupling, followed by a deprotection to get our free amine, and then perform another coupling to put on this purple amino acid. And the series is repeated until you have your peptide of interest. And so at this point, we are ready to remove our peptide from the solid support. And so we do this by suspending it in acid. And so here you actually see it turns this pretty red color in this case with this type of resin. Um, and then uh, after which our peptide should be in solution. And so by draining the solution from the solid support, we're able to isolate our peptide. And so at this point, peptides have as you know about all the different amino acids, have lots of different charges, etc. And so you can think of uh, the peptide here um, as being highly charged. And so what we do is we add on a solution that is um, very nonpolar. Um, and this solution is known as ether. And so when this nonpolar solution comes in contact with our charged peptide, um, our peptide is not very happy. <laughs> it wants to associate with itself instead of the solution, and it starts to crash out. Um, and that's why you can see it's a little bit cloudy there. So to isolate our peptide, we spin it down in a centrifuge. And then this is after spinning it down or after centrifuging it, and you can see there is our pellet, there is our peptide. And so if you pour off the ether, you can isolate our desired peptide. And so this is actually from another peptide synthesis that I did. It was on a little bit of a bigger scale. So you can really see the precipitated peptide um, when it's in the ether. And so at this point, we are ready to purify, and we do this with an HPLC system. With an automated fraction collector here. 
And so hopefully at that point, you're able to isolate your pure product and then you're able to perform whatever experiments you want to. Um, so we hope you guys found this informative, um, showing you how we do it in EJP Lab. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for watching.